Hello, we are back. We're going to post-process some more. Actually, now we're getting more into taking this texture and turning it into something usable in a game engine. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Z on my keyboard, which is going to bring up my Zoom tool. Now what I need to do is I need to isolate this guy so that I can just use the lily pad and I don't want anything else outside of it. But before I do that, I'm going to take a look at some of these highlights here and I'm going to stamp them out. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can stamp this out and the first way would be like just the regular old stamp tool, which I just selected. You could also hit S on your keyboard. I believe it's still S. They change things from now and then now. Uh, uh, with the CC cloud things, sometimes they change it on you. But uh, what I do is I hold Alt and I pick an area that I want to stamp from. So if I want to stamp from here and cover up this highlight here, I just hold Alt, click down, and then I just come over here and you can see that it's stamping that in. Now, it works. Um, it's kind of the old school way. Uh, there's other, you know, another old school way would be um, for me to go ahead and hit L for lasso. Um, let's do that over time, L, and uh, so I can draw a lasso out of an area and just like kind of move it over and erase what I don't want, uh, but let me show you what, I'll do the whole process, but let me undo that lasso. So before I do the lasso, I can feather the lasso a bit so it'll, you know, make the edges a little bit softer so it blends easier. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this to, I don't know, maybe, maybe five, something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a lasso. And so I'm going to say, hey, I want to move this area right here over to here. So I'm just going to go over. And then you can see it actually smoothed the lasso a little bit because of the feather. So then what I can do is I'm using a tablet. Uh, so I can click on my pen. Then I can just say layer via copy. And I can go ahead and hold control down, which will allow me the move tool. Uh, if you want to just use the move tool, it's V. But um, the faster way to do it would just be to uh, hold control down and then you can move this and I can just slide this over here and I can cover that up and if I like where it's at I can either leave this here rename it or I could just collapse it into that layer uh, which would be like layer and then let's see the collapse is here merge down right there so I usually don't use merge down um, what I do is the hotkey so if you look at it one more time all of these have hotkeys next to them and uh, I suggest you learn those because it makes your life so much easier. So control E is what I usually do. So control, control E. All right, so those are two ways that you can go ahead and cover this up. And there's probably other ways you want to figure it out, but um, I'm going to show you much faster ways. So let's go ahead and just undo what we've done. And we're just going to get rid of that. And then Control D will deselect if you if you're not on your lasso tool. If you still are, you can just click outside of it. Um, so if I go ahead and I select this, this is my quick select. Sorry, that's the wrong tool. It, this one. <laughs> if I select this, this is my spot healing brush tool. Okay, this one's great. So I can just basically paint on here, and oh my gosh, it's magic! It just gets rid of those things. Now, it's not going to be as precise as the stamp, so the stamp you really can choose what you want it to look like exactly, but most of the time this does a pretty good job, okay? Um, the first two methods that I showed uh, by marquee selecting and making a duplicate, they, you know, the, the point of that is it's probably the most precise way. You can select exactly what you want and move it exactly where you want, but typically I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now, if I click in uh, on my tablet pen, uh, I can go ahead and I can change the hardness of this. So I can just soften the edges a little bit. And so I can go in here and it'll be a little bit nicer blends. All right, so that's one way to do it. So um, now the healing patch tool, let's go to this one. This is basically, you know, this is like the advanced form of the uh, system that I did before with the, uh, with the lasso. Uh, I know I said marquee earlier, but I meant lasso. It's the same kind of thing. It gives you the marching ants. So I can just move this over here and say, yeah, like that right there. And I can even line up like the veins so they're matching up. Now look at how nice that looks. So that's a little bit more precise than just using the healing brush. The healing brush, you don't always know what you're going to get. Now that doesn't mean I don't use it. <laughs> 
I'm just saying, you know, you want to know multiple ways to do this. So you can go over here, say, oh, I like that right there. Okay, so um, other ways, let's see here. You can use the actual healing brush. It's a little bit different. So let me just control D, we'll deselect that. And let's say we want to get rid of that spot there. Now the healing brush, it basically works like the stamp brush mixed with the spot healing brush. So you can pick the area that you want to um, fix from and then it will kind of try and blend it in for you. So let's say I'm going to go over there. That didn't do very good at all. I don't know what's up with that. Let's see. Well, so here's some limitations. It just doesn't want to go over certain areas and go there. It works fine. But for some reason, when I'm over here, I think it's cheesing out a little bit because of the contrast of this edge. It's, it's looking at a certain radius and saying, hey, I don't know what to do with that. So it's kind of like not doing as much. So um, the patch tool, I think, in this case, is probably my best bet because I can get right next to there without touching that. And I can pick an area that seems logical to me. Uh-oh, look at that. See, now there's where you get your artifacts, okay? It can happen. So um, at the end of the day, the first things that we were working with, like the stamp tool, is going to be your best bet when you can't get anything else to work properly because the stamp tool is very precise and it just does exactly what you want. It's not kind of an automatic thing. It's kind of more of a, hey, uh, I just take this and put it over here and it doesn't try to blend it itself. So there you go. That's why you need to know like the old school methods and the newer methods. So it's 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 great that we have the newer the newer ways of doing things, but I always suggest to people that hey you should really know both. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of some of this. So now here's one of those areas that maybe the patch tool would actually be better. So just go like that. There we go. And then just select outside of it and you can get rid of that. Real simple. You know, so I can start going through this quick. Now I think I'm going to leave some of these artifacts. The only thing is, is that when you're when you're making a texture for this, if you leave a whole bunch of uniqueness, what happens is, is that people will notice a lot more when it repeats. They'll be like, oh yeah, I've seen that one because I remember this pattern on it or whatever. But if you make it a little bit more generic and you get rid of some of these things, I mean, yeah, it's it's more generic. It sounds realistic, so it's not as cool. But at the same time, if it's in a game, you're going to use it a lot then you want you know you want some of that reusability on the other hand if you're doing something for film and it's a one-off and there's only you know there's only gonna be a certain amount then hey uh you know go ahead uh get nuts with it and just do one-offs um that are really unique but of course if you're doing it for film uh this thing's resolution is going to be a lot higher and stuff like that unless it's way off in the distance or something but for games i'm just going to kind of go through here and maybe i'll pick over here because i think that's That'll match up a little bit better. All right, so it's looking okay. Okay, okay. A um, couple more. Just really quickly, see if I can. So I'll even try to match up the the vein and see how that looks nice. So I I, I would have to say the patch is probably my favorite. Um, so I keep getting that because I'm accidentally dragging my pen. But I'm trying to deselect this. So it thinks I'm trying to select again when I'm not moving it far enough. So anyway, okay, so here we go. Move that. Um, fine, that's good enough. All right, and then you can see there's dirt in the middle. I think I'm just leaving that dirt. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take the background here and I'm gonna give it some like really crazy color to hurt my eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the background and turn this to like an orange, it's not too terrible. And I'm going to hit Alt Delete. So Alt Delete will uh, take your foreground color and fill that layer. It's just a shortcut. Uh, I do suggest you do those shortcuts. It makes your life so much easier. The other way is to go to Fill, Foreground Color, OK. I mean, it's so slow, just Alt Delete. Yeah. If you hit um, Control Delete, it does the other colors, the background colors. So you can see it just went white. I hit control delete, alt delete back to orange. Uh, definitely gonna make your life better. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna destroy uh, this outer area so that we can have that uh, as a transparency area and then we have the opaqueness here. 
Uh, so there's a few, there's actually a lot of options. I mean, the most basic option is the eraser. Like the first thing you think of, if you come from the traditional art world like I do, you go, I'm going to erase this and get rid of it. And you're like, there, it's done. Okay, yeah, that works, but not the best way. Um, you want to work non-destructively. So non-destructively means that uh, if I use what's called a mask right here, and then I select a brush right here, I can go ahead and paint black. So I just switch to black, or you can hit X on your keyboard, it switches back and forth to the foreground and background. But I can paint black in here, and it just gets rid of it, and then I have this mask. And what I can do with the mask is, if I hit X on my keyboard again, I can go ahead and paint back whatever I want. So it never really goes away, it, you just don't see it. So that's the idea of the mask, okay? You have masked it. All right, perfect. So that, that is one great way to do it. Um, how can you get to this mask being faster? Well, they do make stuff like um, magnetic lasso. And I can start clicking this, and you can see here it's trying to follow these pixels. It's magic. No, it's not magic. It's just probably looking at the contrast and difference in colors. And since in this case, this, um, this outside area is very different than the green on the inside, we, it's, it's doing a pretty darn good job. Now, if we did not have it as differentiated, by the hues, then we would probably not be able to use this. Okay, so I'm gonna click back over here, and that's not a bad job, so I'm gonna hit Alt-Delete, and what I did with Alt-Delete is I just used that foreground color to fill in the mask. Sorry about that. Just finished rendering another video. Um, so, uh, there's other ways. Let's see what else we got. So we hit Control-Delete, get rid of the marching ants, what about this? This is quick select. Now, sometimes this will work really good. And you can see here, you can come into here, and it's doing a pretty good job at selecting around these edges. I'm gonna say not bad. Now, it's not perfect, but that's okay because I can go ahead later and clean that up with a brush or whatever. So this quick select is really, doing justice. Now again, I'm using a photo, and let's fill this, I'm using a photo that is just perfect for using the quick slot. You know, had this not been so perfect, uh, black and green like this, you probably run into problems. Okay, let's talk about, in my opinion, the most precise way that you can do this. Now, I don't suggest doing this for every, every way to do it, but um, this is probably the most precise way that you can get, and that is the pen tool or path tool. So um, let's see, I've got the path tool selected. I think it looks like they have separated these out. I just, I just want to tell you, I just downloaded the newest Photoshop. Uh, so I, if there's a few differences in here from the Photoshop I'm used to using, um, I'm finding them out as we go. It's pretty much all the same from what I can see. But I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to start using this path. So what you can do is you click, I'm going to just show you, if I click like that, it puts, if I just single click, it just drops a sharp edge. So I'm going to undo that. So I hit Control, Alt, and Z to keep undoing. Um, and I'll go back to the original one. So, but if I click and drag, then I get this Bezier handle. And when I get the Bezier handle, I can really control how this curvature works. Now, I have used this thing so much that I know exactly where I'm going with this guy, okay? Uh, if you haven't used it so much, you might be like, um, this is hard to control. It just takes some practice to get used to. So once you've, you know, used it as much as I have, you can see, you can get really super precise right where you want it. Sometimes the brush is just as fast. I mean, the brush could be faster. This is not the fastest way by far. And if, if time is the essence, then maybe the brush will work. But in some cases, when you need something to be super precise or you need to make a shape that you might use again, then the great thing about this um, is that you can save it out and you can tweak it later. So let me give you an example. 
So we're going to come up to here, and I'm going to just actually stop right there, and I'm going to just drop a few little points way out here, and then I'll bring it back over here. So that if I drag here, because I it's just, this was originally a single point, like a sharp point, it only gives me a bezier handle on one side. But we're going to change that. So I come over to this tool right here. Okay, it's called the path selection tool. The black one is for selecting an entire path. The white one is for selecting the uh, points within a path or the edges within a path. So if you if you notice, if I select right in here, I've got just this in-between point selected, and I can pull on it. And I just undo that. I can select this handle, and I can start tweaking with the handle. I can take this, like say a curved edge, and if I hold Control and Alt together, I can click on that, and I can make it a sharp edge. Or I can hold Control and Alt again, and I can drag while I'm touching it, and I can pull out that handle again. It's really awesome. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to transform that to sharp edge, and then I'm going to drag out. So now I got the handle on both sides. Okay. So that's how you can tweak that out. And so I can go ahead and just move these around if I find that I didn't get it in the right spot. Again, not the fastest way, but when precision is key, and you want to fix it, you know, you want to be able to fix this later, or you need to keep these then this is a good way to do it. Now, what do I mean by keep these? Well, um, you can save selections, it's true. So I can go ahead and save the selection. I'm gonna hit Control D though, and get rid of it. Actually, you know what, what the heck, I'll show you how to save it first. So you just go up to select and you say, where is it? <laughs> save selection right there at the bottom. I, I don't use it that often, but I do use it once in a while. So you can save the selection, you can give it a name, you know, and it will be saved, and I'll show you how to access this. So just call it BBB, and I'll say OK. And so now if I come over here, here's that selection, BBB. Let me hit Control D. So when you actually, so I can be out here on my layers, on this guy, I click on this layer, and then you see my, what I'm working on. I go to Channels, and I can go to BBB. All right, now I haven't selected it yet. If I hold Control, I click on that, and look what happens. You just hold control, click on that, and it selects it. So that will work for any of any kind of mask, okay? So since this we have a mask going on here, I'm gonna go ahead and hold control and click on that. Now what's happening? It selected the white areas of the mask. Okay, only the white areas, the black areas it, it does not select. Okay, so I'm gonna hit control D to deselect. Now I'm gonna to go to the paths, okay? Now look, this is it's interesting. I have what they call a work path in here. And that's what I've been working on. I can take this path and I can double click it and then I can give it a name. I'm just going to let it stay at path one for now just because I don't want to rename it during a demo. And now this path will be saved into my file just like the selection will be saved into the channels in my file. But again, the difference between the path and the selections is that the path can be tweaked again. So if it wasn't right, I can tweak it. Um, now if I hold control and click on the path, what does it do? Just like the selection, it goes ahead and selects that if you hold control. So I'm going to go ahead and hit deselect, hit it again. I got it. Okay. Now what else can you do with the path? Well, if I select this and I hit B on my keyboard, now I've got a brush selected, and then I can hit X to switch to my white color. I can go ahead on whatever layer I'm on. Let's go ahead and just make a new layer and go back to my paths, and I can go ahead and stroke the path. Okay. Actually. Now that I'm off of my uh, alpha channels, I have one, I do my white, uh, black, and white image. So I just basically stroke the path with this brush. So if I wanted to switch the brush, of course, I can grab something like this goofy tree brush, which sometimes is fun, and I can go like that. And it's a you know I just filled up that whole area. So let's undo those. Um, so pretty cool. I mean, you can make a mask from it. Um, I think this is the fillet, so you can fill it in. Okay, so we look here and then we can see on our layer just automatically fills that area. So we don't have to like select it and then fill it. We should just hit that button. So the path is a pretty powerful tool. If you want to throw out the path, let's go back to that, you just junk it, 
by hitting that, or you can, I think you just hit that, ask if you want to delete it. And then if you want to duplicate it, you can duplicate it, okay? So um, you can duplicate it, and then you can free transform this. So control T, and then switch tree, brings up a free transform, and then I can just rotate it, I'm holding a shift to make it snap to, I think it's 15 degree degrees. So you can do stuff like that. Um, you can scale it this way. So it's really cool, really, really flexible. Uh, just a great tool for being really precise, and I do use them often, I will say. Uh, so that's, that's the different ways you can mask this. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my brush, because in this case, I think that the fastest way to get this done will be just to pick my good old brush and to um, make the size of my brush the right size. So let's go ahead and see, I forgot what the, the shortcut was, there it is. So you hold Alt and Control, and you can go ahead and drag left and right to change the size of your brush. And then if you hold Alt and Control and drag up and down, it'll, stay, it'll change the, um, the softness, see that? So I'm dragging up actually to go softer and down a little harder. Okay, so left and right or something like that. Now if I hit control plus, I can zoom in. Now that's a great shortcut to know. Because anytime you're working, like let's say I have a selection or I have my, you know, I'm in my path tool and I want to zoom in without switching my tool to the zoom thing, I can just hit control plus and it'll zoom in on whatever I'm working on. Now to get back to my mask, I have to make sure I click on this mask and you can see there's a little border around it. Okay, if, I, if I'm over here, I'm going to be painting on my, um, on my, you know, image. But if I click here, automatically it turns to white and black because it knows that, you know, you want to paint on your mask. And then I can come in here and I can start going ahead and eliminating these edges. And so I'm, I, the reason why I use the orange uh, behind it was because I want to be able to see where I'm cutting this thing out. I want to be able to see it really, really well. So now I have a problem here with my brush, and I'll show you why I feel like I have a problem because this is brand new Photoshop. I don't have anything uh, adjusted yet. I need to go to my brushes. I need to go to my brush preset. Actually, no, I was in the right area, sorry. This one. And I, my spacing, I want my spacing to be less because I feel like I'm getting a little bit of, like it's not smooth enough. So now it's smoothing out better. So as I go like that, I'm not getting like little jaggedy parts because it's leaving spaces between my brush. So now all I have to do is kind of go around like this. Um, you can also, of course, use a regular lasso. I think I, I went over the magnetic lasso, but I didn't mention that you know, I could just grab a, re a regular lasso and, and start doing this. Um, I would say right now it actually almost looks like my path <laughs> might have been faster. And I think that's, honestly, that's just because I'm so used to using the path. I use this for so many times, for any different things. Um, oops. I'm uh, trying to increase my brush size, which is the, um, the brackets. So, um, left bracket is to make it smaller, and right brackets to make it bigger. So go like that, and we can fix some of these areas. And so, of course, some of them, if I want to get really precise, I need to cut it here like this. Uh, and you know what, I mean, it's it's not going to kill this if I, if I go in a little bit. So, um, one other method that I have not mentioned that uh, could really do this really easily and fast if, in this situation where we have um, something that is very pronounced against a like a plain background um, is uh, I could have done like an automatic selection or a color selection and so I'm going to show that in a second after I just paint you know paint a little bit more of this out so now in this area here where I get these white areas now I can go and fix those. Or I can decide, you know what, I'm just going to, just going to paint those out a little bit. I'm just going to go like this. Start painting those out. Just get rid of them. No one's going to know. You know, I mean, you know, realistically, there's usually always like a curve on the end, edges of leaves. So, um, and this is obviously no exception. You can, you can tell 
the way that the highlights are right at the edges like that, that it's facing a different direction, it's catching the light, and so that observation is important, but at the end of the day, um, we can do that in a normal map. So let's put it in a normal map, we won't have to worry about it here. So in your, in your diffuse map, you're fine. You don't really, you don't need to show that curvature so much in your diffuse. Sometimes if you, like back in the old school, um, you know, the Wii days and before, you know, GameCube, whatever, uh, what we used to do is we would paint some of the light in, uh, you know, because we didn't have that, that, uh, that lighting model that we have nowadays. Nowadays, you don't have to worry about it. So, um, back in the day, you, you could say, hey, we'll just paint a little light in on the edge of this and we'll make it look like it's getting lighting information. And it was just a fake. It's just a you know, smoke and mirrors. So, um, okay, so let's just pretend this is all done because I don't think you want to be bored watching me do all this. And I'm going to go ahead and just control minus, which zooms me out, or control zero, which zooms to the extents. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to say, wait a second, you know what? I just thought of a new way. Let's duplicate this layer and see how this works. Let's just delete the layer mask. Delete layer mask. Okay. Now, what if I go up to here in my select and I go color range? And I say, let me select everything black. So what this is going to do, it's giving me an idea that it's going to select anything that's in that black range. And I can change the fuzziness, which basically what that does is it will um, basically increase how much, you know, off of the main color that I selected it will get. Now I can also add colors to this. I can hold shift. I can grab that. So I can just pinch on that guy. And I can go ahead and undo that. So I've got some problems there. I'm going to read, I'm going to say no to that. Um, and let's see what else. That's probably pretty good. Let me just add this little bluish in there. Because I think this is a little more blue up there. I'm going to hit OK. And now I just selected, you know, almost everything. So it worked pretty good. Now it's not always going to work this good. You know, like I said, this is a perfect example where the, the water, I don't know what was on the bottom of this pool, but it was really dark. So it worked out really easy. And so from here, if I go ahead, um, I don't want this selected part to be what I want. I actually want the inside part. So, you know, the, the other way you can go about this you can go about this by going color range and then actually selecting this inner part and holding shift and getting all these different green values, you know, so that might actually be a smarter approach to this. Um, and I can say, okay, okay, wait a second. So I made a mistake there and I need to, I needed to deselect it before uh, I went into that. So it just freaked out. It didn't know what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I got all these areas selected. And then maybe turn my fuzziness. No, I'll, I'll leave it up. I'll hit OK. Now it's it did pretty darn good. Now so again, this is a, a special situation. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go to my lasso tool, just the regular lasso tool, and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna go like that. I'm just gonna include these areas that it did not get that I want part of. So when you hold shift, you'll see a plus comes up next to your lasso. And that plus means that you're adding, the next time you go like that, you're, I just added that area. So let me do that. You could also subtract by holding alt. See, you just subtracted that whole area. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Go back to the lasso. Add, add. And so sometimes I do switch to my zoom tool because the zoom tool, you can pick exactly where you want to zoom in on and you don't get that option with the, um, no, let's just grab the whole area. We'll fix it later. You don't get the, the to pick where you're going in when you just hit control plus. It's just going to, I think it base, it might go where your cursor is, but if you have to lift your hand off the keyboard, then, you know, where's the cursor going to be anyway? You don't want to get on it. All right, so look at that. That's another really, really fast way that I was able to, to really nail this thing down.
This is one here. Ooh, there we go. I love the pixel grid. No, I don't. I actually hate the pixel grid. So that's what we're seeing here with this little white stuff. So we go to view. Um, let's see here. Let's see one of these. Show pixel grid. It's right here. Ooh, much better. Okay. So let's zoom out a little bit. Now, we got exactly what we want. We're going to hit mask. Boom. Now, I mean, we're like probably 80% 80, 80 there, you know. Um, take a brush. We're on our mask, remember. We're going to, we want to get some of this area back. So let's say, go back to my white by hitting X. And then I can just paint the area back in that I want. That's why the orange is there, so I can see what's going on. So like this area might be something I want. Although maybe I'll just leave that as a whole. Maybe I'll say, hey, that looks kind of cool. Let's just leave it there. There's some, you know, maybe there's some flies or frogs. One of the two chewing on that thing now. So just kind of go like that. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it going. All right. Good enough. Good enough. I think that will do. Um, hmm. There's an area I don't like. So like I said, when I say 80% done, uh, you know, you always got to go back and look at your work. So I go back to my, my actual color layer and then I'm going to go ahead and decrease my stamp size. And I'm actually going to harden my stamp a little bit here. Maybe I can go here. Let's see if I can just I can see that, oh, you know what? That's, that's also part of the mask. That's why. So this is what we're going to need to do. So we need to go and um, brush that back in. So it's just getting canceled out by the mask. And then we go back to our stand. Let's just make sure it's all stand. It's all in here. And now we go back to our stand. And we're going to go ahead and just paint some of that back in. Let's go ahead and fade it a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and um, you can change this opacity setting by just hitting, let's say, we hit four. So you can see it went to 40%. So then it's you can start to fade this a little bit. Now be careful when you do this because you want it to look realistic. You don't want to, you know, make it look cheesy and stuff, but I don't think anyone's gonna do it. So go ahead and hit control zero. That will bring me back out. And so look, I think we've, we're doing pretty good here. Okay, so this is videos at 30 minutes, so I'm definitely going to stop it here. That's a lot of information to take in at 30 minutes, and uh, go over some other stuff later. I'll probably clean up the rest of it while in between the video. Thanks for watching. I said it was done, but it's not done because I forgot to show one major thing. And uh, I want to show you that. So, first of all, let me make a confession. When I was lassoing, I forgot I had my feather pixels still in there at five. So there were some parts that got lassoed uh, and and kind of like got faded a little bit in the mask. So what I did is I kind of just did a big circle like this with no feather, and then I went into here. And I just pasted the white in there called delete. And um, then we uh, took care of most of those issues, and the rest of them I just brushed in if there's some you know faded parts. Okay, so let's get down to two more tools that I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of these tools is going to be brought up by double-clicking on your mask, and you see that there's a properties and there's a feather. Uh, let's just feather it a little bit. You can see it kind of pulls the, the uh, mask out a little bit and, and fades it, but that's not really that important. Let's see the density. Um, that's That can actually just overall lower the effect of the mask. But what we want to look at is we're going to look at the select and mask. So um, you might, if your transparency is like this, you might want to turn it up right away so you can see where the mask is working. Um, there's this edge detection. I, you know, I'm not going to use that so much. The one that I want to really focus on is here is we got a smooth mask. 
So we can kind of smooth this thing out just by playing with this. And so let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we're getting here. So let's turn the zoom on, or the smooth off and you can see what happens. So let's see if we just want it a little bit more smooth like that. Now the problem is we're getting those little areas in there like that. And we might not want that because we're seeing the black and we got to go and repaint that then. But we also have a shift edge and you can notice uh, that this is in the middle. And if I shift it in, it actually goes ahead and starts you know, going into this area. If I shift it out, of course, it goes the opposite way. So I can shift this in a little bit. Uh, I can feather it if I want. Of course, we've got all these different settings. We've got contrast. Um, we can up the contrast as we, you know, after we feather it. And we can just make the edges look a little bit better. Okay, so that's an important tool. One other tool I didn't mention. So I'm going to hit OK for sale. So we just accepted that change. One other tool I did not mention was the wand tool. So underneath the quick select tool, there's the magic wand tool. And before there was quick select, there was magic wand. And what you can do with the magic wand is set a tolerance. So 32, it's going to look at, you know, a range of 32 difference from whatever the pixel color is that you're selecting. It's going to just look at the pixel and say, okay, you know, is anything that's within a tolerance of 32, I'll select. Now, if I turn this up, let's say to 80, I'll deselect this and redo that. There we go. So you can see it went all the way out, uh, even beyond. So there's there's some transparent pixels and stuff that it's grabbing. Oh, actually, we're on the black and white. Let's, let's, let's deselect that. Okay, so within 80, it's still grabbing all this green. Okay, let's go to one. Oh, it's only selecting one little pixel. Now here's why it's not going further. Um, when we have the wand selected, which is the, the hotkey is W, we also have an option for contiguous. So because this contiguous is on, it's only grabbing pixels that are within one um, tolerance of this. So it's got to it's got to be like really close, right? It's got to be almost just exactly like this pixel. So if I turn that off though, and I hit this, look at what happens. It grabs any pixel all over the whole thing. So in other words, they don't have to be connected. Now. They don't have to be contiguous. So, um, so that's another way to go through and select. Now you can also turn this up. Let's let's go with like fifty. I select this. I got almost everything, um, but I didn't get everything. So I could go into here and I can go uh, wand and I can hold shift and you can go ahead and select those areas that you missed by holding shift and it'll just add those two. And you could also, uh, at that rate, you can go ahead and have your wand tool and hit alt. And I hope you're seeing patterns here of how Photoshop works. It's got a lot of the same functionality. So now it's deselected a whole bunch of items just based on the fact that I hit alt on one of the main colors and so it got rid of almost the whole selection. So that's another important tool. So those those are the two things I wanted to go over before we ended this topic of masking and I'm sure there's other tools in there uh, that I, I'm not covering um, because you know everybody's got their tools that they use and Photoshop really has many many ways to do the same thing. So. I hope I covered enough of them to get you well-rounded. All right, thanks for watching.